18.1 Whoops We're going to do that 18 out with a little bit of static in there. Give it a little stir stir. Sure, it's nice and level. Knock it down a little. Relatively level, level, level. Noticed in my uh, 20 gram decent basket, I got a lot more headspace, but it kind of defeats the purpose of, uh, or defeats some of the benefit of using this puck screen, because now with the more uh, deeper headspace, uh, I still end up with slightly soggy pucks that don't come out as nice and dry as they were when I was cramming it into an 18 gram basket. I'm using 18 grams, as we saw. Um, but now I got a 20 gram basket. Um, and also what I just kind of did is I made sure it was level because sometimes I see it teeters, it kind of, um, you know, kind of doesn't sit right. And I don't know if that's going to really affect the extraction, but I did notice last time the shot kind of started on one side and then moved its way very quickly over to the other side. So it looked like it did start nice and even, um, you know, good even extraction, but it didn't start in the usual fashion where um, you know, it kind of followed a pattern which indicated that maybe the water was hitting this side first and then it kind of, uh, you know, flowed and filled up the rest. So that's my theory. All right, so this might be tricky. Um, what should I film? All right. I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a pre-infusion. Okay, the flow is pretty much off. So I'm ramping it up. And usually here when the pressure's gonna start building. Yep, chamber's filling. Oh, okay, we had about four bars. Just watching the gauge. All right, now I'm gonna drop down to about three and now I'm ramping the pressure back up to nine bars which is losing pressure because there's probably a channel so what do we got we got 20 grams in about 20 seconds that's good I'm gonna lower the flow just because it seems to be going a little fast now and ooh. so overall pump time is 44 seconds we got 30 seconds on the clock, about 39 grams out. Looks pretty good. Uh, lately my shots have been a little slow, so that seemed fast to me, but that's probably on spec. Like that's, that's probably more how it should be. So I tried it straight and it's uh, actually pretty good. Um, usually I add a little spoonful of coconut sugar um, so I just tried it before that because I'm going to do a little experiment with this one. Um, I'm going to try doing an iced, steamed, nitrogen or oxygen, air infused coffee. So yeah, we'll try that. First, uh, I'm going to make some more shots because I want to compare the P64 with the monolith with the same coffee. Hopefully they're dialed in about the same. Alright, 18.1 again, going into the monolith. I got the monolith set at uh, 250 RPM, so it's going to take a while. So I'm not going to film that. 
So I should have done this with the other grinder too. Pot loading where you throw the uh, coffee in, quiet it down a little. Uh, pot loading when it's being filled as it's running apparently will help with the uh, grind consistency or maybe just help the motor, less strain on it when you first start. Uh, I don't know, it really makes that big of a difference. Anyway, this is going to take a while. About this, Let's see the RPM as it goes in real time. So you can see it's like 248, 250. You can see it going to 254 sometimes. It's gonna take like a minute. I used to have a static problem with this guy using a plastic uh, DF64 cup with it, um, but as you can see, it is. Pretty clean now. Um, yeah, it's also a matter of getting the, you know, the shoot at the right size, uh, the right, you know, height. So what I like to do while it's running, just go like that. Knocks out whatever's in the shoot. You can also do the bellows, and you get a tiny bit out. But uh, yeah, that should be everything. Uh, yeah, let's weigh it when I put it in porta filter. See what we get out. I should also mention I got this uh, flare shot mirror. Um, it does light up, but uh, I don't know if the light is very useful. Probably gonna... Yeah, I don't know if it's just because I'm using rechargeable uh, AAA batteries in there. Um, maybe it's not as powerful as it should be, but yeah, it's not. It's not that bright, and even if it was bright, I don't think it's gonna make a difference because the brightness. I mean, you're staring directly at the light. Yeah, it's definitely, I think it was brighter the other day, but yeah, the light's kind of pointless. If you're staring at the light, your eyes are going to adjust. Uh, the light is going to be less going up, reflecting up into there um, than what, you know, compared to the light blasting in your eye. Uh, so I think it will just be detrimental. Um, also compared to my other um, cheaper stand. It had an adjustable screw here, which I found um, helped because mine was a little loose. This one's also a little loose, so like you nudge it, it will move and then could fall flat. Uh, the stiffness, I'd like it to be a little more stiff so that I could adjust the uh, this thing uh, better so it stays. It's kind of finicky. Um, but it uh, I do like the, um, yeah, I can't do this with one hand. Uh, <laughs> the, um, I'm just going to leave it like that, not in the right position. Um, it does have magnification, so that, uh, that I find is nice. You can really um, see the shot a little clearer that way, because you're kind of zoomed in. Um, but mirror, kind of unnecessary, and stand could be better. So, I don't know, I might just resell that one and keep my old uh, cheaper one. Also, one uh, another cheap one coming from China that has like a wood-looking um, side um, thing, which kind of looks fancier. I don't know if I really love the uh, the wood accents. I don't have any wood accents on anything else. Not really my style, but uh, I don't really mind. I forgot. I was grinding low RPM, which needs a little boost. So this thing, turbo button. That should help get out the rest of it, along with the previous practice of knocking the shoot out, giving it a little bellows pump. And, oh yeah, that's a good amount we got out. So I'm gonna see how much that is. So there we go. Usually, um, so I put in 18.1-ish, and there may have been some leftover crumbs from the uh, P64 grinding previously. Um, or we just had some retention in there from, from earlier. Uh, so we got an extra point one out. Um, usually it gives out, you know, you put in 18 grams, you'll get out 18 grams or 17.9 or 
something close to it, but uh, because I was doing extra low RPM, what was it, 250? Yeah, that's pretty low. Um, that should give you more clarity, less body, which is why I did that, just to compare with the super high clarity uh, unimodal burrs that are in there, SSP unimodal and the P64. Um, although I do have this set to a relatively high RPM, which, um, you know, kind of opposite to this. Uh, but I think this one works best with these burrs at a higher RPM because otherwise it's just too unimodal. Um, I'll do more experimenting. Just the theory. Um, the few times I've done low RPM shots with these burrs on the, the P64, it didn't turn out that great. I don't know if it was just a coincidence or whatever, but uh, that's my findings so far. Uh, and I haven't really wanted to risk uh, doing low RPM again, so I haven't tried it too much to confirm. But maybe I should. So yeah, it's a full shot. All right, same process except for the monolith. We're going into the pink cup. And we'll compare a little without sugar, without anything added, and then I'm gonna do some experiment with the uh, one of them. So stir off low flow, increasing to fill it up. Oh, sounds like it's filling up faster than it did before. Oh. Got to do the pre-infusion, I messed up already, but we're at like eight bars. Looks like it's flowing nice and even. We're gonna go full pressure now. Got nine bars. Yeah, there's a little channeling. Yeah, we're down to eight bars now without adjusting the flow. I'm gonna let it go, do what it wants to do. And we'll end up in about close to what we did before. Oh shit. Oh shit, no. So, based on my initial tasting, they're both good. I'd say the monolith is more intense. The P64 seems more mild this time. I don't know, uh... I think it's my brewing, because I had that happen with the key as well the other day, where it's just like... Some coffees come out unusually mild, it's just super easy drinking, no bitterness, no sweetness, but it doesn't seem like the flavors are that strong, so I'm guessing it's due to the way it extracted. Um, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to give it some time to cool and taste it again. Added a little water to cleanse my palate. Um, I mean, didn't add it, but tried it. Um, it's interesting, they're both kind of... Both kind of mild, kind of weak uh, tasting. Maybe it's this coffee, um, or the way I brewed it. I think I did over extract a little. I think both of them kind of channeled similarly, where it, you know, maybe water is bypassing the coffee, so it's not over extracted, but it's just partly extracted. Um, uh, yeah, I switched to the decent, uh, decent baskets, which are similar to BST. I wanted to talk about these as well. Uh, they're, I think they're basically VST baskets, um, so I got a 20 gram one in there now, and just like the VST I had before it, it's, uh, it does require a finer grind, and I find it's more picky of puck prep, and more likely to channel than my stock basket. I think I still prefer the stock basket, but, uh, some people believe grinding finer will help with your, uh, extractions so um, anything you can do to grind finer they say is beneficial but I don't know if that's true or not true I just don't know um, they're both kind of very similar tasting now I don't know if my palate is just done or if I'm uh, you know I got the COVID who knows uh, but they're both similar let me try again and find out yeah I thought they were kind of weak but now I'm getting some astringent noti uh, notices, some astringency in both of them. Um, it's kind of like a, can't tell if it's bitter. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's sour. Hmm. I did notice with like one sip that there's a little more flavor clarity in this one, but usually that's the that's the P64. Um, 
yeah, usually this one does give you more flavor clarity, um, maybe more acidity. Um, and then this one has its own kind of unique flavor that uh, I didn't notice today in this coffee, but usually kind of colors it with its own kind of personality. It's, it's, uh, it tames the acidity, it tames the bitterness, and it gives it a nice sweetness. Um, I find the monolith, or sorry, the key, the Weber key does the same thing um, in a different kind of way. Um, so I like the monolith and the key in that regard. They're also very versatile. They work with different uh, brew methods and uh, you know different roasts of coffee, dark light. Uh, everything seems to be seems to be easy to get good results with. Um, yeah, but this time they're basically the same. Um, <laughs> I did not notice too much of a difference. Maybe because they both uh, channeled and weren't extracting amazingly. Um, but that's my result this time. So I'm gonna do, maybe I'll make an, do another video because now it's getting long. Uh, I'm gonna try steaming one of these or both of them together. Yeah, I'll do it in this video, whatever. If someone wants to watch it, I'll, I'll put on chapters so that you can skip ahead if, uh, just kind of keep it organized as much as I can. All right, check it out. We're adding ice. Whoops. All right, I have no clue how much I should do. Um, I think Kyle's video uh, was saying 130 grams of ice and like 100 something grams of water. Uh, let's just do, oh wait, we're supposed to add the espresso. Let's see what we got. So we got about 90 grams of ice and then I'm gonna dump in the gray cup, which was the unimodal P64, I believe, of espresso. And that is only 23 grams left. So maybe I'll add a little bit of this to this one as well. Probably make a mess. Yeah, you know what? It needs more espresso. So let's do that. Let's just double it up. Beautiful. 50 grams, 52 grams of espresso. All right, now we're also supposed to add some water. Oh, all right. So now we had 52, so that's basically another 50 grams of water. And maybe we'll add the rest of this. Okay, so it's about halfway filled. We got 130 grams, maybe I shouldn't have added that much. And we're gonna steam it. Uh, so it's foamed and kind of hopefully not overflowing. Uh, and yeah, and we're not gonna do it hot. We're just gonna do it so that it's, uh, it's foamy. Let's see what happens. Check it out. I'm not the best at steaming milk, but uh, looks pretty good. It expanded a lot. It looks pretty foamy. And you know what? I'm gonna pour it in my nice new nice new Loveramics. Cortado glass. Which uh, we definitely have. Oh that's cool. Ooh, we should do a slow-mo version of this. It's already kind of in slow-mo. Huh, cool. I wonder if we should try it before it settles. And now it's settled. Well, it, uh, it tastes pretty mild. I think there's a little bit more, you know, kind of creamy texture to it, which is pretty cool, considering there's no dairy in this. Um, I think this is also kind of settling. Try it again. Hmm. Yeah, it tastes more like, um, you know, if you're into an Americano. Um, yeah, I kind of want it more intense, actually. So it was already kind of a mild coffee to begin with. And then we watered it down with all the ice and water. Next time, maybe I'll try it again with, uh, with less. Less water, less ice, maybe. Uh, but it was uh, it's a really cool sound actually when you're steaming with the ice kind of 
melting and uh, swirling around in your, your steam pitcher. It's kind of relaxing to hear the, the gentle, uh, uh, you know, rumblings of the ice. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna add some sugar to this, and it would be—it's basically like a good, uh, like a good, you know, AeroPress co drip coffee type thing, more than a, more than a, a strong espresso. So I'm more into, like, I've been drinking these straight, or like, you know, topping it up with a little foamed milk and in, in a little cortado cup like that lately. Um, Recently, what I've been doing, uh, I did this a couple times. I took uh, the key, a shot from the key, or and a shot from either uh, the P64 or the Monolith. So we got a shot from a conical burr and a shot from a flat burr grinder. And we combine them both and make an extra double double shot, basically, um, with a little bit of milk. And I find those are really good. You kind of get the best of both worlds, conical and flat, although. This one's not very conical-like. It's uh, it does have maybe more more texture to the the shots a little bit more body, um, especially compared to the P64 with the unimodal burrs. Not much body in that, um, but the the key has a, a different kind of characteristic that it kind of like I mentioned the the monolith does as well. Kind of gives it a color to the the coffee. It it gives it a characteristic like. Uh, you know how some uh, people describe audio like headphones with or speakers, um, how they colorize the audio so it might not be technically perfect, like it might not be how exactly how it's supposed to sound, but you can make it so it's more pleasant to more people. So it kind of it, it just seems nice. Um, this kind of does that, and also this does that. This one will just give you with these birds anyway. They'll give you what is supposed to be there. This is like the studio reference. Um, so if you have a bad coffee or you brew it badly, it's going to be a little more punishing. Um, generally, I mean, it's not... If you know what you're doing, if you, you know, you, you might mess mess up sometimes, but you make corrections, you figure it out. Um, it's, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just maybe a little, uh, little harder, especially like... Chronicles, they're supposed to be a lot more forgiving, and I find it is uh, pretty forgiving. The monolith, not a conical, flat burr, but also due to its unique kind of burr design, it is pretty forgiving as well. But I'd say the key is even more so. So yeah, the the key I find it does have more of a unami kind of flavor. Um, unami, that's how you say it. Um, it just makes things taste nice, uh, usually, and uh, yeah, I like it, uh, I like them all, um, but I got too many grinders, I also have more on my other table, so I'm gonna have to try and uh, sell some of them, uh, we'll see who goes first. Alright, so the final result, I added some milk, uh, some sugar, and yeah, I like it, it's got, uh, it's very mild. Um, but, uh, I find it does have a, hmm. I made it so it's slightly warm, um, so maybe I over-steamed it, um, and now it's been sitting out, so I don't know how much the nitrogen really affected it, the, the, it's got milk in it, so that changed the color, um, uh, yeah, um, it's good. Worth a try. Um, I do notice with this coffee, I think it's more the coffee because I think it was doing the same thing when I tried it straight as espresso. Um, it kind of has this uh, this astringency, this this kind of drying. Yeah, I feel like a drying on your tongue. So I don't hate it, but uh, it's just something to note. Um, I think it's just this coffee or the way I pulled the shots. I don't know. Um, I might just switch back to the standard 18 gram basket and uh, yeah, see how that goes. This is a new coffee, but I think I had better results yesterday with it. Um, I liked this one yesterday more. It seemed more interesting. So yeah, maybe not the best shots. <laughs>